Hello everybody, Joe Bigger Donuts here, and welcome back for another episode of Tsukihime Remake, where last time we left off, uh, things, things happened. We hung out with CL, died in the school's nurse's office, and then came back, and then went and got some butter chicken that... Messian? Is that, is that how I pronounce it? I don't know, I need to see the spelling again and have, have Google pronounce it to me, because I can't trust my own assumption of words. You know what they say about assuming... Ugh. And I don't need to say that here, because I'm assuming <laughs> you already know. But, ladies and gentlemen, I am tired. And to be honest, I'm I'm kinda sore. Like, I think I I think I hurt my back a little on Friday. Yeah, it would have been on Friday. Uh I had to carry a really big ladder by myself. I'm talking like a twenty foot metal ladder. That kind of uh, retracts into itself, so that way you can make it even longer. Which, it's not super heavy. It was definitely over 100 pounds, but I don't think it was over like 150. Which, in and by itself, you know, that's fairly heavy, but it's not ridiculously heavy. The issue is, it's so fucking long that the weight distribution is kind of wonky. And you have to, like, carry it on one shoulder. So one side of your body is kind of jerked to one side. And over the weekend, and even today, like my lower back into like my ass has been kind of, I don't know how to describe it. Like my lower back, it's not like pulled muscle sore. It's kind of got that like tingle and where it feels kind of tender. But, it, but, it, but it's not like bruised and it's not like pulled muscle. It's just kind of like, ugh. like you can, it doesn't feel very, very good. But no, like, shooting pain, like I slipped a disc or anything. I think I pinched a nerve, which explains why my, my ass cheeks have been tingling, too. You know, your sciatic nerve runs down, runs down to your leg. I get that one sometimes. Uh, like, your buttock down to your thigh on the side. There's, like, a big old nerve. And that's easy to pinch when you sit down funny. And it's it's not very pleasant. It It doesn't hurt a lot. But it, it definitely makes walking around uncomfortable. I feel like my, my goddamn mother when I talk about it. Because I remember at the, we went to like Disney World once. Not on this recent trip, but like years ago when I was still like a teenager. Like before 16, but like after 13. I don't remember the specific time frame. But she had pinched her nerve like right before going and walking around the parks like damn near killed her. Which, looking back at it, now that I now that I get it occasionally, I'm like, yeah, I can see that. Like, fuck that. Get me, like, one of the mobility scooters and push me around, and let's just skip to the front of the lines. Which, the the fast passes aren't as good as they used to be. But I was fortunate when I went uh, on this last trip, because one of... I, I know it's kind of fucked up to say this, but, you know, one of my nieces is just has a disability. So, we got to jump to the front of the lines. And, you know... She's she's not like hung up on it. She's like, woo, fucking skipping lines. Let's go. Like, yes. Get to get to go meet the princess. She's like, yes. So, if uh, hey man, if she's got no qualms with it, I got no qualms with you know, riding in her wake, just letting her plow us to the front of the lines. Cause fuck those lines at Disney. My God, especially for some of the big rides where it's like, oh yeah, you know, just hang out for two hours in line for a ride that's going to take like five minutes and then what you spend the whole day there let's let's be generous and say you spend 12 hours at the parks what you ride like five six big rides and then you go home like that's that's got to be the worst way to experience the parks i'm sorry i'm sorry if you're poor and or your parents are poor I, I really have nothing else to go off of there besides, I'm sorry. I, I hope you enjoy, enjoy your time at the parks nonetheless. But it's been, uh, it's been a little warm today. So forgive me if I'm, uh, I lose focus and it's hard for me to speak because I'm a little sleepy. A little sleepy too. Ugh. Thursday and Friday, they, they were nippy, like... The wind sliced through you, and, like, the real feel was down in, like, the 30s. But 
today damn near broke 70. So we were we were big, big chillaxing during work. Hell, it even got too hot because we sit upstairs in the cockpit surrounded by windows. So it's like sitting in a little greenhouse. So even if the temperature outside is like 70, you know, cooped up in there with all the windows just magnifying the heat, it gets up to like the mid-high 90s. So for, for late November, that was... Uh, a little much. We had to crack open the windows to get a get a cross breeze, you know, cycling the air out. But yeah. Ooh. Oh. And I was busy today. The only thing I ate from when I woke up till literally right before I started recording and I had my dinner was a can of monster. That was it. So I'm like dehydrated. I didn't have like anything to eat today and now that I've eaten I'm tired and just want to go to bed even though it's just before 6 30 so let's uh get this get this ball rolling you know get a show on the road I'll bang out an episode real quick I say real quick but I'll bring it to its full length be that an hour and a half two hours whenever a good chapter break is where it doesn't feel like we're cutting off in the middle of the action or you know a good point to cut off in the middle of action, which is a good cliffhanger for next time. Who knows? I I don't know where we're going. Let me take a sip of my water, because like I said, I'm super dehydrated. I'm thirsty as fuck. Good old tap water. Which, in all honesty, it's not that bad here. I've definitely had tap water from worse places. Like, it's, it's not the best tap water. I like going home more because we have well water, you know, got those good minerals that are good for you. I, I was trying to think of another another positive like adjective for them, but no, it's, it just tastes better. Sorry, sorry, city dwellers who only have their, you know, 300 old, 300 year old city lead pipes that you drink the water out of. I'm sure that makes it taste good because lead is a, it's a sweetening agent, so it probably makes your water very delectable, even though it kills your brain and makes you stupid. <sighs> well, that's enough insulting insulting my audience for the preamble of the episode. What were you saying, Shiki? You, you spoke your line when I was, you know, getting OBS ready. Yep, technically you didn't lie. Mm -hmm. Just like I said. All about the loopholes, baby. The park is dark and deserted. My flimsy excuse aimed at no one in particular disappears into the night. Oh? Mm -hmm. yeah, I especially don't know who it's uh who he's talking to in his head. Otherwise you might try to like rip apart his head to get at her. Besides, as far as as far as promises go. I made a promise to argue it first. I silently make a sincere apology to CL. My only defense is to argue that these are two separate matters. Alright. Not really sure we'll find any this way, but it's a shot. Arkwood is telling me to take my glasses off and walk around town. I get nauseous when I take my glasses off, even when there's no one around. So it'll be all the worse in a crowded city center. But all I can say in response to that face is, leave it to me. And his chin grows like three sizes. You know, gets a fucking cinder block head. Oh. I appreciate the sentiment, but you could have worded that a little less uh, sadistically, ominously.
At Arkwood's command, we march towards the bustling downtown area. I feel a strange surge in mo motivation as I resolve to take off my glasses. First up is the shopping district. We need to find and eliminate as many vampires as we can. <sighs> but in spite of my eagerness, we come up empty-handed. We go from the shopping district to the back alleys to the office district, then all the way to the abandoned factory without finding a single vampire. Everyone must be on high alert after hearing about Roa's death. Afraid of Arcuid, they're hole up in their rooms, wherever those may be. We won't be able to find them like this. But they can't stay hidden forever. If they don't eat, they'll turn back into corpses. One way or another, they'll have to take a risk if they want to survive. Will they come out of hiding first, or will we let up on hunting them first? This waiting game will likely continue for some time. It's kind of anticlimactic, but it's better than there being more victims. And more than anything, this means I could spend more time walking around town with Arcuid. Mm-hmm. I sit down on a bench and wait for my lingering headache to pass. The night air is cold. Feels like every breath I take freezes the toxins that are making my head pound. My dizziness and nausea slowly starts to subside. Yeah, walking around town at night's fun. Especially if it's, you know, a town with a hustle and bustle. Otherwise, it just kind of feels creepy. If it's like a dead downtown area. Versus a city never sleeps coming downtown. Despite that disturbing declaration... Arkwood is in a good mood. She's spinning around in circles in front of me as I rest on the bench. Yeah, trying to make you dizzy so you throw up. What's up with her? She's like a kid who just stepped outside for the first time in her life. Or a prisoner who's finally gotten a taste of freedom after being locked away for years. Alright, a little on the nose <laughs> now. Awesome. While my mouth spouts off a sarcastic remark, my eyes can't help but follow Arcuid's form. I guess I can't deny it any longer. I care deeply for Ciel, but I'm completely smitten by Arcuid. Just as I feel drawn to Ciel, I feel drawn to her. I was obligated at first because I had killed her, but that excuse no longer applies. Oh, what a fool I am. I want to be useful to Ciel. I'm infatuated with a mortal enemy, a vampire. There must be something wrong with me. Logically, I know I should keep my distance from Arcuid, but the primal urge pulls me towards her otherworldly beauty. Once. I even went so far as to give in my lust, and ruthlessly committed an unforgivable act. I shake my head to clear away the lingering images. The nausea's back, but that made me feel like myself again. It reminded me that I'm not worthy of spending time with Arcuid like this. Yeah, you know, all your pieces fitting together right? You know, I'm not getting sore where they, uh, like, smushed back together. Because yeah, you've been acting a little weird. I mean, you always act weird, but like weird in a different way than normal. Arkwood bends over to look me in the eye. Yeah, you haven't been using duct tape again, have you? 
She's so close, I feel drunk on her scent. I look away, self-conscious about lying to her. Oh, okay. So you like put yourself into an energy saving mode. Huh? I assume? Unless you just have more fun this way? Markywood giggles as she skips away from me. She looks like a butterfly fluttering about. Yep. Bad move. Don't bring up other women when you're on a date. Becoming more human sounds like a bit pointless to me. If not outright, not outright dangerous. But as long as she's making a steady recovery, I'm happy. Feeling relieved, I lift my face up to see... Oh, buddy. You're so young. Arky was standing even closer to me than she was before, glaring into my soul. Rayback Acta, who are you talking about? I mean, she would say she can smell her on you, but all she can probably smell is the curry. Good way to mask your scent, CL. Unless CL's scent is literally just curry. But that feels a little mean. I'm the one clinging to CL, but telling Arky with that would spell certain doom. まあ、吸血鬼のことを教えてくれたのは先輩だけど。いいじゃないか。先輩も前もやってることは同じなんだから。ロアは倒したんだし、もう敵対する理由はないんだ。You いい。真相であろうとしてであろうと吸血鬼にとって大好者は敵なの。前にも話したでしょ。あいつらがどれだけ陰湿な奴らかって。もう忘れちゃったの。指揮のバカ。Yeah, but but she's a pretty girl that talks to me. An organization formed for the sole purpose of exterminating vampires. Hunters of heretics who execute the Lord's teachings in his holy name. The executors of the church, CL's true allegiance. The main reason dead apostles operate in secret is because they are afraid of being discovered by them. It's complicated. You could say the dead ancestor apostles are the are the real traitors. Or that, you know. Essentially how it is now, the greater number, which is the like dead apostle vampires, are the real heretics, but now that they vastly outnumber true ancestors that haven't strayed from the path, like Arkwood, who's like the only one left, uh, they are now the uh, canonical, like dogmatic, the, the the words escape me right now, but they they are the ones who are able to claim legitimacy, and it is it is you who are wrong, even though you were the original way. Anyway, moving on. Ma, <laughs> She keeps getting back up. Makes her real fucking annoying, I bet. This has seriously gotten under Arkwood's skin. She can't even stand to say CL's name. I give up. I knew they didn't get along. I had no idea it was this bad. So, what? Hmm? What? 
あいつをどう思っているのかってこと Well, she, she buys me lunch sometimes, so that's cool. But she, she can't go to a nun that they in the kettle. I it's the kettle, damn it. Another no, I'm going to get you to get a good center. Those crimson eyes begin to flare. Hold up. She looks like she's seriously ready to kill someone. You, you listen, I did not know. The first she'll kill her, then you, then herself. 先輩は俺の学校の先輩だいつも世話になってるしブローブの時だって助けてくれたアルクエイトだって先輩と一度話せば仲良く It's not that simple. 絶対にならない私はあいつが嫌いだしあいつも私を殺したがってるし I mean, yeah, she does, but you also want to kill her, so 指揮は騙されているだけよ埋葬期間の人間はみんな殺されてる You'd kill her if you had the chance. Daitai, Anata was Hajime Kara Aitz no Shotai of Stata. Do say it's Modori, Ipanjin no Frios de Anata of Karakate Tanjano. Well, when you say it like that, that's true. Siel did hide her identity from me, but she had her reasons. The only way she can protect people is by keeping the existence of vampires a secret. Since vampires disguise themselves as humans, revealing her identity would alert them to the executor's presence. Besides, Ciel is still Ciel. Knowing the truth hasn't changed that. Having lunch with her, laughing about pointless nonsense with Arahiko, spending time together in the tea ceremony room, it was all so much fun. If such a thing were possible, I might have been better off never knowing Ciel's identity. So, Shiki, Anata, Ano, Nato, Watashi, Dochi no Mikata. Uh, can't he be on his own side? Her tone is openly hostile. Seems that Ciel is an enemy that Arkwood can never, that Arkwood will never embrace. That's why she's glaring at me so fiercely. Anyone who sides with her enemy, even Shikitono himself, is her enemy too. So not what I was at any night or more. I know I know I'm at manga. It's any more. I could not deny that. I was a little extreme, but I'm glad we're putting down baseline rules to our relationship early on. It's important to establish boundaries. The words get stuck in my throat. I. Uh. Obviously, cave and then two time and then go hang out with CL. Duh. Like. I know we're on the CL route, but you know, play to your audience. That's important. Let's see what the guy says. Yeah, yeah. I'm entirely right. I know how to navigate the battlefield that is called love. I think back to that rainy night. Arkwood was dead, murdered by my hand, and as I was selfishly praying for death to take me, Ciel brought me back from the brink. I mean, he's kind of put his life in danger in the first place every single time, but... I think back to the fight with Vlav. Sigel fought alone in that frozen wasteland for a cause she stood to gain nothing from. Yeah, but your reasons. Your raisin debtor is a little, little different. I think back to Sigel's smile at the curry shop. She said she accepted me, even if I'm scared. Even if I'm lost. Again, the. Yeah, get out of his head. You can smell it. Uh. 
Sorry, that's supposed to be internal. Damn, did I say that out loud? Also, you know, he probably, like, licked that spoon that he, like, fed CL with afterwards when she wasn't looking. But then you would do something like to go to his house and lick all the utensils and then put them back in the drawer. He'd be like, tee -hee -hee. And then blush about it, and then he'd be like, ugh. They're making it hard to think. What, all four of them? Got a second pair folded away in your hair up there? I know I've literally only known her for eight days, but come on. Yeah. Yeah, human relationships are complicated, Arkwit. Did that just say? Ah, but I can't lie about how I feel. Even tonight, I withstood the pain of going without glasses just so I could walk around town with Arkwit. I don't know why, but just being with this woman makes me feel like my sins and fears are all erased. So much so, I have to consciously, yeah, consciously, consciously force myself not to wrap my arms around her right here and now. In, a, in other words, I just want her. <laughs> Victory scream! <laughs> Arkwood hunches over, her back trembling like an excited cat. Then, with a strange cry, she raises both hands into the air. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I said, play to your audience. Be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. もちろん。好きの言う通り、明日はもっともっと何倍も綺麗になって待ってるね。Gonna <laughs> go read some fashion magazines, go to the mall. いや、何倍もってそういう意味じゃ。Get some new outfits picked out. Pay for it in solid gold and gems. My voice doesn't reach her in time. Arcuid has already leaped away in a flash. How do you get money, Arcuid? Kidded. Did you just, like, take raw gold and gems to, like, the pawn shop and get some cash? And then just buy, like, Visa gift cards? Can't even compare... Uh, can, yeah, can't even complain to her for not acting like a vampire this time. Because that vampire smile has made me blush so intensely that I have to cover my face. Yeah. Yep, stop, stop. CL's route, CL's route. We're on CL's route. Keep reminding yourself. This is not this is not OG CL good end. It's almost midnight. I have to return to the mansion while I still have the energy. You. An iron rod is raised high and swung down in one fluid motion. At its end is a blade over 50 centimeters long. It has seen many years of use, and its once keen end, keen edge remains permanently blunt. Weighing in at one metric ton, gravity is all it takes to propel it downward. The dull blade crushes the skull of its panic-stricken prey with its immense weight. The force with which turns bone to powder is something to behold. <laughs> A natural response. Sight is enough to horrify anyone. 
They cannot comprehend what is happening. They cannot comprehend what has just happened. This is a safe zone. And this area is supposed to be free of danger. This town is no longer safe for vampires. The true ancestor pr princess and the executors have seen to that. With both on the prowl, they are steadily running out of places to run. Faced with their imminent doom, the vampires were offered a deal. If they met certain conditions, they would be allowed to escape. So, with their guards let down, they gathered here to accept the offer. What, with the church? Are you stupid? Uh, though I guess, from their perspective, they're all new vampires who literally don't know Jack from shit, so... They... They wouldn't have any reason to doubt it. But... Ugh. Yep, run like little cockroaches under a refrigerator somewhere. A massive weapon in hand, the woman in nun's clothing tilts her head confusedly. Confusedly? Confusedly? I don't know where the emphasis is on that syllable. She sees thirteen faces around her. Each one belongs to a pathetic fugitive vampire come to beg for their life. The nun sighs, hanging her head in disappointment. They turn out as decent for a story she made up on the fly. This would never happen back in her home country. Even given a month to drum up anticipation, only two or three at most would take the bait. But there are as many as fourteen here. The layout of the city, coupled with how gullible people are in this country, made it laughably easy. She swings her two meter long murder weapon. The halberd meets no resistance as it sinks into the head of its full of its next victim, splattering it like a rotten pumpkin. Mmm, pulpy. <laughs> Thank you for doing that line read for me. Human life shrieks of despair fill the air. The men and women, the men and women gathered here are mostly in their early twenties. None of them have ever seen the face of their blood-soaked companion. And they've all received the message. An unsullied steps forward, savoring each second of his spectacle. <laughs> I'm morally against glue traps because they're they're just mean. Like sure they're getting killed one way or another, but having them like struggle to death and like rip off their own skin is kinda of fucked. Just like crunch their spine and have them die instantly. With like one of the good plastic mouse traps like I have. Blood sprays into the air for the third time this night. The menacing blade sets its sight on a nearby mark and comes swinging down on top of their head. This time the impact is devastating. There's nothing left of the skull as it burst open. The blade runs through the victim's neck to the center of their torso. これからお姉さんが外獣駆除をするわけだけど、変な勘違いされると yeah, I know you're like a, a nun, but can you give like uh, last rites and all that? No, no, it's just, you know, your eternal soul and all that in the next life. The 
The holy woman removes her halberd from her last victim. Now nothing more than a pile of flesh. And thus the panic has taken hold of the captives reaches its peak. They run in all directions trying to get away from the nun. Their legs are like lead. This place has already been boarded against vampires. Or it has no effect on humans. But for low-ranking dead apostles, it feels like being trapped at the bottom of the ocean. Unable to run, their bodies grow slower by the second. <laughs> Like a fish. Mm, like one of those live sushi restaurants you see in like Korea and China. I'm sure there's some in Japan too, but. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Women, am I right? Uh, the nun's smile does not waver. She raises her halberd, its blade dripping with blood, and brings it down on the skull of her next prey. Her breathing grows ragged. It's as if she is excited by the scream extracted by that blow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys are kind of. Yeah, she was in line about that bound to field, huh? Man, there's a lot of screaming and gore in this, uh... Hey man, this is, this is some Old Testament divine punishment where even if you do literally nothing wrong, you, you are being punished by God for your transgressions. The nun sinks her blade into the back of the defenseless young man. Eyes bloodshot, he stops just short of cutting out his spasming spine. She stops. Ugh. Yeah, you know, I don't even view as people, ergo, I'm not guilty of murder. Man, really going to town on that guy, huh? Jesus. Good line reads, though. Really having fun in the booth on that one. His screams utterly fill the room. The five remaining captives can do nothing but tremble as the horrific scene unfolds before them. The nun drops her weapon, then meticulously, relentlessly, begins to torture her fallen prey. Now you're going a little far there, CL. First, she uses a sacrament to restore his sense of pain. And she nails his eyelids open so he is forced to watch. She strips him naked and flays him, exposing his innards. One by one, she cuts out his organs with her black keys. The pain that assails him is enough to make him wish for death. After removing all of his organs, she saws off his ears and nose. Not seeing his own mutilated body, kill me, is all he can think to say. For her final act, she, craps, she cracks open his skull and fills it with holy water. Mmm, good sizzle. To a vampire, holy water may as well be sulfuric acid. The brain shouldn't be able to feel pain, but the blessed liquid envelops her brain in agony so complete that it transcends the sense driving him mad. Kill me, kill me, kill me, he says over and over again. A record player on repeat. <sighs> 
sister lets out a sigh that sounds out of place in this hell. She lifts her halberd with a grunt and destroys the endlessly looping phonograph. Yeah, went, went a little nutso. The nun flashes the group a sweet smile. It is the final straw. They go into a frenzy, shrieking as they pound against the walls, even as the bounded field melts away their hands and feet. They are begging for freedom from the depths of their being. You, you don't seem to get the picture at this point. There's really nothing, nothing really to do for you. Suck, suck. Like I said, fucking, we're getting Old Testament biblical here. One left. Perhaps tired from her efforts, the woman takes a moment to catch her breath. The sole survivor asks a question of the resting nun. Uh, one, because you're vampires. Two, because you were stupid enough to show up. はい。俺たちはただの増票だ。本当いても、あと数日で餓死していたって変な怪物だった。あんたみたいな掃除屋がわざわざ手を出す必要のない<笑> Why, do you think they're just send you up to like a vampire ranch to like go live on the farm or something? Like under supervision? Well, you see, she's a small fry executor, so you know it makes sense she'd go for the small fries. The nun's eyes go wide at the vermin's unexpected rebuke. She is truly surprised, not by the fact that her prey is showing such incredible humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's no fun punching up, you know. Like, if you're gonna blame anyone, blame your own weakness. But by the fact that it's asking her about something so obvious to any human. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's how you get your ass kicked. Well, it was it was because of that, but also because you're little little peons. So そう。都合よくストレスをぶつけられる相手が欲しかっただけよ。そんなの見てわかり。ああ、最悪。あなたたちって脳まで腐ってるのね。もしかしてクリームでも詰まってる。詰まってたのよね。そんな甘ったるい
You have such a depressing sigh that it sounds like your soul leaving your body. Amen. Even if you're making, uh, you know, dollars while the boss is making, I mean, even if you're making dimes while the boss is making dollars, you know, still gotta do your some work. <gasps> Hearing a voice behind her, the nun frantically arms herself. She's adept at picking off enemies weaker than her, but woefully inadequate when it comes to anything of equal or greater power. Her tenacity is a handicap, uh, her tenacity is to handicap herself by matching the worst case scenario. Tendency, not tenacity. Her tendency is to handicap herself by matching the worst case scenario, a habit that prevents her from deploying her true strength. Even now, thoughts of the worst are already beginning to form in her mind. Though she is yet to see who the voice belongs to, the very thought of an unknown third party approaching is enough to chip away at her sanity. Huh? <laughs> Pretty, pretty sure you, you can't say that as uh, <clears throat> someone who works in the church, but okay. Mario! Shisai Daiko! Relieved, the nun relaxes her shoulders and lowers her halberd. But the knot of tension in her chest remains. She understands the danger that she is still in. これは正当な動物です。ドアを yeah, like, I can get, like, maybe getting a little messy with the running ones because, you know, you can't get a clean, clean hit in. But the whole, like, flaying a man alive while, you know, keeping him juiced up so he feels it and then cracking his head open and filling with holy water was a little... That's kind of fucked up. That, that's some real serial killer shit. Mm-hmm. Ah. You mean that uh that one there who just got bit? Or can you actually like save those people? Huh. チキンな てめえが知えるの相棒であるいじょ。俺たちは対等だった。バンツ。だったとはどういうことでしょう。え、has I think you're lying. Are you a fibber? Shikayuchi,てめえは俺の預かりだが。スクワも悪い。精神も不安定な不良物件を使うほど間抜けじゃねえ。この一件が終わり次第、てめえは修道院送りだ。今のうちに身辺整理をしておけよ。Off to make like goat cheese in the countryside at a like a little coven. The coven. Convent. Yeah, not convent. Covents are like what witches are in. An institution for the faithful who have chosen to lead a communal life under the teachings of the church away from the secular world. Just as the Holy See is the smallest country in the world, each convent operates as its own isolated little world. Once a nun takes her vows, she pledges to live out her life at the convent and becomes a member of the community. Separated from the outside world by a single wall, 
She lives as a child of the Father, abiding by the teachings of frugality, chastity, and obedience. It is a fine existence for those who seek it. However, for those who do not, being forced to live in the closed-off world of the convent is akin to torture. There is a reason that Noel could not become anything but an executor. So, it is as an executor she would be re-educated if she were to be sent back to the convent. The brutal training she survived when she was younger is something she does not believe she can go through again. But worse than anything, being sent there would mean undergoing a full body examination. Oh no, she's been a skank, she's been fucking. For executors, chastity is not determined through by one's virginity, but the purity of their human body. Or as she just, because she got bit, she's lost her hu humanity vampire virginity? virginity? So right now, that examination is something she has to avoid at all costs. あ、私は常に最善を尽くしていますうん。てめえみたいな凡人の最善なんて知らねえよ。うん。ええか。ここは通勤時間のある事務職じゃねえ。殺し合いの最善線だ。無能な奴も無能じゃないだけの凡人も
The boy's voice faint, uh, rings faintly with resignation. Maybe, maybe call up CL and be like, hey, what the fuck? Like, you didn't even talk to me about this? With one last try raid, the boy leaves the back alley. Only the blood splattered nun remains. After making sure that the boy has indeed left, she picks up her weapon and swings it into a discarded steel beam with all her might. Because he's got power. Like I said, thumbs the brakes. The clanging of metal does not come just once. She swings a total of eight times, hurling curses not meant for human ears. The steel beam is completely crushed, now just a pitiful wreck, a sculpture perfectly portraying rage. <laughs> Woman lets go of the halberd, her shoulders heaving. She has overexerted herself, lacking the physical strength to lift her weapon on her own. She typically casts a sacrament each time she swings it to reduce its weight. This time, she swung away with nothing but raw fury. She laughs dryly at this desperate, self-destructive act that may very well have sapped the, snapped the muscles in her arms. <laughs> You sure are. Oh, I was wondering how you did that. It was nice of them to throw in a little, little explanation for that there. Still, her anger does not subside. The situation has changed. She knows she needs to stay calm and devise a counter move, but her heart refuses to cooperate. Then, at this of all times, because it is time. A nightmarish spasm runs through her body. She crumples as her insides assail her. She kneels on the ground, digging her fingers into the dirt as she clings on to her current self. Nausea comes over her, accompanied by a terrifying chill that freezes her to the bone. Well, she has never experienced it herself. She imagines this is what morning sickness must feel like. The imaginary child in her womb is surely not human. Yep, tick tock, tick tock. Again, maybe if you just like have a lot of Olive Garden, the garlic will kind of keep the, you know, keep the flare ups at bay. A weak voice inside her pauses so that she might not even have that much time. Her back feels like it's about to split open. She pulls a dirt covered hand to her mouth and holds down whatever it is that threatens to burst out of her stomach. <laughs> yeah, hey, pot. Like, uh, those kettles in there say something a little similar? I'll kill some more vampires tonight. I'll kill even more vampires tomorrow. That way I'll be saved. I'll find salvation. I'll find the revenge I've been chasing for 13 years. <sighs> Still shivering from the cold, she forces, her, uh, forces herself back onto her feet. Get mush mouth. The nun picks up her halberd with brute strength and leaves the makeshift ex uh, execution site. A 
twisted smile plastered on her face. Well, that was neat. I'm glad you had a fun night, CL. I mean, uh, Noel. Sorry, their names, they end in the same syllable there. Easy, easy mistake to make. Just don't do it in front of one of them. It's 12 a.m. I slink back to my room in the middle of the night while everyone is sleeping. Sneaking out and back is starting to feel more familiar. I change into my pajamas and crawl into bed. Immediately, drowsiness takes me. My brain must be tired after how much I've used my mystic eyes, even though, even though I don't feel that bad physically. I take off my glasses, set them next to my pillow, and close my eyes. Uh, yeah, 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 but then you can't sleep, and then you gotta go read a book. Uh, best not to think about it. Don't think about anything in bed after 9 o'clock. I give in to sleep. An unpleasant floating sensation washes over me, but I manage to clamp down on it as I fall asleep and release my grip on consciousness. Mm-hmm. Ah, just a little insomnia. I tear off my covers and get back out of bed. The leftover energy in my body is keeping me awake. While my mind is desperate for respite, a slow feeling of torture. There is nothing to do but to go over to the sunroom. Isui and Kohaku would notice if I turned on the lights of my room, but the light from the sunroom can only be seen from outside. I'll just grab another book tonight and look at the words until I get sleepy. Or you'd just be like, a normal 17 year old and just like look at porn on your phone and jack off until you fall asleep 1989 AD I was born into this world the child of a shopkeeper in the French countryside with the East Asian features I inherited from my mother I grew up feeling like a foreigner in my own town even so the townspeople were amenable folk always welcoming me with a smile. To repay their kindness, I did my best to live my life positively and honestly. Yep, because they just liked it and remembered, and they thought, well, at least she's not Algerian. And then they went back to their days. Because they're French. I helped my father, went to school, dreamed about the future. As many children do, I struggled with puberty, which came early for me. But I never doubted that I was fortunate I knew I was privileged with a rather charmed life. But time passed by so quickly, and suddenly my 12th birthday was upon me. Abruptly, a change came over me. Sometimes, when playing with my friends, I'd have this sudden desire to snap their slender necks. Sometimes, when I saw a beggar on the side of the road, I might imagine stabbing them, their malnourished stomach for the fun of it. Yep, teenagers are mean like that. Especially like middle schoolers, they're particularly vicious. Because they they have like the higher thinking, like, like intellectual features to be specifically cruel. But they don't have the emotional intellect yet to realize that that's bad and they shouldn't do it. The impulses came without warning and followed no pattern. I would unexpectedly find my head filled with violent thoughts. But just as I was about to act on them, I would remember my own name. I'd run away with my face in my hands, bring back the scream in my throat and the tears in my eyes. I was healthy of body, sound of mind, and held no hatred for anyone. I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call that sound of mind. Yet, whenever I was faced with something within my power to destroy, I felt compelled to try. And I would find my face contorted with joy at the idea. I became afraid of going outside, afraid of people, afraid of myself. I was terrified of the joy that swelled up within uh, within me with every passing day. 
but I could tell no one about it. So I grew more reclusive, day by day, until I stopped leaving my room altogether. And I kept my composure to the very end. And I developed a split personality? Was I possessed by someone else's spirit? I never once entertained such unscientific notions. I mean, split personalities, like, not... I mean, sh sure, it's extremely rare, but it's not very unscientific. Uh, hitting, hitting like, puberty could definitely be a trigger for something like that. Like a neurologic, neurological, like, chemical change in your brain. In the end, my conclusion was that these were the same fleeting, invasive thoughts that everyone shared. I might complain when my father came to wake me up after I'd stayed up late the night before. I might get upset after being splashed with water by a passing car while I walked down the main street after a heavy rainfall. These impulses were no different. Small, internal rebellions that momentarily took me over. But while perhaps other people could control them, I was never someone who could go against their own heart. And it was only a matter of time before I ended up doing something that I couldn't take back. All I could do was lock myself up in my room. I was dead set on living out my days, doing nothing and meeting no one. That way, I wouldn't have the chance to get angry about anything or build resentment for anyone. So I thought. I should have feared myself less, trusted God more, and turned to a priest for advice. Hiding away in the prison I've made in my room wore away on my soul, until eventually I reached a breaking point. That day, with my true self fully transformed into someone else, an innocuous thought came to mind that I was thirsty. Slowly, I dragged my weakened body out of my room. My parents, who were relaxing in the living room, came rushing to me as I emerged for the first time in a month. My father greeted me, concern in his voice. My mother smiled, tears welling in her eyes. And I killed them both. It was all too easy. My body was still weak, still thirsty. But I had the strength to bite down on my parents' throats and drink and drink. After draining them both of blood and life, I stood up. Unfamiliar voice spoke with my tongue. The thing that was once me painted its mouth red and, wra and wrapped its own body in an embrace. What providence was this? Typically, the vessels I reincarnate into were all chosen in advance. First, they must possess authority in the land of their birth. Second, their family must possess some unique talent. The first condition is more important, and the second merely supplementary. My, pre my preliminary task is to find a family line fulfilling the first condition and set at the destination of my next reincarnation. However, in my previous life, the princess killed me before I could make my decision. Instead, I was forced to abridge the process and, re and rely on astrology to guide me. Which is how I ended up with this body, belonging to a child in a middle-class family with low social standing. I knew it would be challenging to take control of the town under these circumstances. Building influence in the few years I had before the princess found me was next to impossible. But I did not despair. If anything, I felt euphoric, as if my body was brimming with light. Weighing lineage against talent, I had always chosen the former. As a consequence, my hosts had never physically excelled. But this time was different. This body possessed magic circuits in such abundance and quality that they could generate more magical energy than a hundred mages. Even the most talented mages would be considered defective compared to this. I could only laugh at the miscalculation of my past generations. All this time, my conditions were backwards. Authority and influence can be acquired with time. However, 
truly outstanding body is a gift one must be born with by the grace of the Lord. It is not until my unknown reincarnation that I finally realized this truth. After I awoke, I set about transforming the town into a necropolis, as quietly and inevitably as water seeps into dry soil. I abandoned the disorderly methods I had previously employed. This time, I proceeded gently, taking care not to spill too much blood at once. I was careful and methodical. Within a single night, the town was mine. From there, I painstakingly, lovingly built my castle from the ground up. I would not let a single human escape, but nor would I let them die unnecessarily. First, I neatly frosted the cake with despair, then little by little, sneering all the while, decorated it with jam and jelly and meats in resplendent fashion. It wasn't the most efficient process, but there was nothing that could be done about that. My reincarnated, my reincarnated consciousness cannot exist on its own. I, myself, am nothing more than knowledge and drive. My personality is reconstructed for each new generation, based on the character and values of my host. Though I have control over my vessel, its thought processes and norms do not change entirely. Yep, it's like hopping into a new car every single time. You know, the, the generals are the same, but the, the specifics on how it actually works is a little... They all have their little quirks. In other words, my body belongs to my reincarnated self, but my original self remains. It retains its consciousness and memories, but it slumbers amidst a nightmare of its own creation, in which it cannot wake. Which is why I remember. Remember the feeling of biting into my parents' throats. Remember the days I spent tormenting the souls of the townspeople who once smiled at me, slowly melting them down one by one. All in all, it took only a week. In a week, I held the lives of everyone in this town in the palm of my hand, mine to play with for my own amusement. I wished to lose all reason, go insane, and yield everything to my impulses. But if I did, I knew that I would only commit even worse atrocities. I had to hold on. If I maintained my sanity, at least I could limit the harm I could do. Destruction is close at hand now. Not of this town, but of something much greater. I find myself rejoicing that my magnum opus is coming to fruition. For this reason, I have chased eternity. For this reason, I have collected the blood of so many. For this reason, others like myself, masters of far greater necropolises. Necropoli? I feel like it would be like necropoli. But necro... Ne necro... Bleh. Necropol... Necropoles? I guess necropoles would be right. It's, it's Greek, yeah? I've converged on this town. Before long, my consciousness will flicker out. Tonight, the world would end. That would fade away before I could see it, cursed at to the last. If this nightmare had one saving grace, it would be that its end came quickly. The pale woman arrives with the crimson moon. I don't know who she is, and yet... I do. The sixth ritual begins. With this body, I believed it possible that I would finally have that woman in white. And then... And then, the profane ceremony was brought to a halt. The white vampire princess and I did battle, ending in my demise. With my next reincarnation already prepared, I transmigrated, leaving only my corpse behind. The woman departed, my body was brought to the Holy See. Well, that's cool. Don't know what that ritual is, but it sounds real menacing. Is that like the, the crowning of a vampire king? You know, they, they all meet up and, uh, you know, pick their next leader. Is that how vampires work? But... 
Uh huh. Arc NCL Rainbow. Because because if you don't know, that's that's why that's why they're 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 named Arc NCL. You know, Arc NCL. It's a rainbow. It's it's so funny. It's a good play on words. I actually really like it. But with that, ladies and gents, I know it's a bit of a short one, but we hit we hit a day break, which means it's a good time to stop, because otherwise we'll go the whole goddamn day and we'll end up with a six hour long video, which isn't very good. And also my chest hurts and my shoulder. I might be having a heart attack. I doubt it. It's it's probably just because I didn't eat all day and only had a monster that my heart palpitations are happening again. So with that, uh, I bid you all adieu. But before we go, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and check out the Discord in the description down below. And if I don't die of a cardiovascular episode, I will see you guys all in two days on the 20th of November, 2024. Uh, time to be determined. Because if I, you know, if my heart actually explodes and I have to go to the hospital or something tomorrow, I probably won't record that day. I'll probably have to wait until the day after, or who knows. Hopefully this won't be my last will and testament, in which case, uh, for legal purposes, I leave all my possessions to my parents. Uh, and uh, I hope everyone subscribes. You, you're not allowed to unsubscribe after I die. Uh, let, let my channel be a monument to my sin and folly and uh, a warning to all mankind. Uh, not to stoop to my lows and to seek to better yourself and have a good life. Uh, that's, that's all I got. So uh, I'll catch you guys later now. Bye-bye.